Hello guys and welcome back to the channel, another architectural asset for you today. This is a table that's fully procedural, there are a lot of options that you can change for this table to make it uh, the way you want it to look. And as usual you could download this node tree and use this table for yourself from the link in the description below. It's not free, it's two dollars, but it's a way for you to support this channel and also mm, you can uh, obviously use it for uh, learning or even inside your projects and whatever. As usual in the first part of the video I'm gonna explain what you can get out of this object, out of this node tree. And in the second part of the video I'm gonna show you how I made this node tree. As you can see there is a lot of nodes here but not as many as uh, in my other node trees probably but still there's a lot to learn here and so you can create your own without having to purchase my own but uh, anyway that is an option if you want to so let's begin right away by showing you uh, the showcase of this node tree and what can you do with it so it's a table right first things first and that's very important for all of my nodes and all of my object uh, the bevel is possible. Since there is no bevel inside node trees you need to use it outside of the node so with a modifier and it's very important for me that whatever happens inside the node the geometry will allow you the bevel. So if there are two lines overlapping the bevel would not be possible so I always uh, watch very carefully to not have that situations for example if you scale something to zero if you even if you cannot see it it doesn't mean that it's not there and then it would interfere with the bevel so you need to be careful for that uh, and so as you can see the bevel is working you can set it the way you want and of course it would be really weird looking if there is if there was no bevel and nothing in life is that sharp or or uh, that infinitely sharp so anyway so the bevel is here and we're gonna switch it off just for the sake of this video or even I don't know keep it like this with the with the one segment bevel okay let's begin it's quite simple actually so table height pretty self-explanatory number of sides and here where it gets fun right away so number of sides, we can have triangle, we can have a square table, we can have a pentagon, we can have hexagon and so on and so on and so on until we have a perfect circle. Uh, but uh, there is, uh, uh, okay, so now then we have the square ratio. When this is zero, the size of the table is controlled by these two values so size one and size two but when this is one only size one is controlling the size because square ratio it means that it's like symmetrical on both sides so and it will if we if you have a pentagon it would be a regular pentagon with the with all angles equal so you control the size and this is actually the size, the biggest size. So this is the size I'm talking about. So let's go into Z. So as you can see, if we set it to two, you can see from the from the grid below that this is actually the dimension of two. So it's not uh, half of the radius. This is the value. So you know exactly the size, the biggest size so if it was an hexagon this would be the size of two this is obviously smaller so it takes the bigger of the two sizes if these are all regular shapes the biggest size is what defines the shape okay get it if we get uh, like a circle and it's two you'll see that the size is here to here okay i think we got the square ratio we got the square ratio right. Okay, 
And now, of course, I already explained the size one, size two. So size two, if the square ratio is one, is doing nothing until you correct the square ratio. Okay, let's go on. So top thickness is this. Then we have the inset top. So this is something I've added and you can use it or as you can see, you, you don't need to. So if, if this is a value, it insets like a, like a shape inside of this. And you can uh, use it as a different material. Maybe this could be wood and this can be glass or something like that. So you can, you have that option. You can have it obviously to zero and you don't have it. Okay. Then we have the bottom thickness. The bottom thickness is this. You have the inset bottom. So you can have it. You can control that. You can go all the way there or you can even go over so maybe st stuff like that is also possible to have like a i don't know dining room table with stuff here and here or maybe you can have like monitors here or and here your keyboards or stuff you have that option so instead bottom right like this then we have the leg position and we need to have this uh, option because uh, it's something that becomes very relevant when you go and you have a number of sides a lot bigger so that you have like a rounded table and then the leg position needs to be adjusted okay then we have the the the, the leg options so we have the top leg radius Oh, first let's let's look at this parameter here. Here we have triangle, rectangle, circle. One is triangle. Two is rectangle, and three is a circle. So you can have a different shape of the legs, and then we have leg size ratio. So this is pretty interesting. So if we go into positive one, we'll have this situation. So it's it's getting scaled on one of the two axes, like this. Positive gets scaled on the y axis, and the negative it gets scaled on the x axis. So this one also it's pretty useful sometimes. Let's set it to zero, and then the square ratio is one. Then we have uh, the leg angle, and this is something that you can set your angles of the legs so that they are not perpendicular to the floor. Maybe something like this. Why not? And up here, we forgot to talk about the top leg radius. Top leg radius and bottom leg radius. Oh, this can be changed as you can see and in the last but not least and let's set the rectangle shape last but not least is this leg alignment so this switch because it switched one to zero it switches from a normal alignment or a simple alignment so no normals just all legs are uh, oriented in the same direction and of course if you have like uh, this leg angle uh, that is uh, not zero so it's not completely perpendicular to the floor then this leg alignment uh, is practically useless because if we have like this kind of a situation and you use the leg alignment uh, then uh, as you can see we get some weird uh, looking table that's gonna crash any minute soon any minute now but uh, so this leg alignment works only when we have the angle of the legs to 90 or zero in this case and uh, what does it do it aligns the legs on a normal or not 
so if you have like uh, they are all facing in the same direction so if we have like uh, uh, I don't know like uh, maybe best example is like a square okay so now you can see that if, and also if we maybe say change the leg ratio maybe on the other side like this as you can see now all the legs are facing in the right direction and if we set this leg alignment to one then we will have like this looking situation if we have the leg size ratio to zero then sometimes and also bottom legs radius leg, if they're all the same then this probably is not what would you want your table to look so that's an option that you can use okay so this is practically it the, re the rest are the materials and they're all pretty self-explanatory let's just insert the top a bit i don't see it now but it's okay the outer material is set it to green okay the inset is a bit small let's bring it back okay green uh, top inner material is set it to blue let's set the red and let's set the legs green just so that you can see that you can change all these different materials perfect so that is done and this is the end of part one and now let's go into our geometry nodes workspace and let's try to figure this node tree out and let's begin we're looking uh remember shift alt click is uh, the option to look in the viewport what is coming out out of that node so if i go uh, I don't know, here and shift alt click then i'm going to see what happens with the node here and let's see what we've got here so i started with the curve circle node that is controlled its radius is controlled by the size and the resolution of course is controlled by the number of sides which is in fact the number of vertices so if we have a number of sides four this is the resolution of the circle so it's we are just using the circle as a creator of our curve okay and then I went to the transform node so this transform node it rotates the my circle in a way that a vertex 0 and a vertex 1 should be parallel to the y axis that's what actually happens here okay let's move on uh, next one i uh, separated the st uh, the position the the minimum maximum position the minimum maximum coordinate of the position uh, of all the vertices and then i subtracted them and then uh i found the maximum that's practically how i found the maximum distance between the two most distant point and then i divided one by that value to be able to set this distance to one so that most further apart two vertices with this node are set to one why so i can scale it so I can scale it with the with this node and control its dimension. So is if if in this node this is one, after this node, whatever size I put inside here, that's gonna be the size of that value that was one in this node. Okay, sounds complicated, but it's not really. Then I practically did the same thing that I did here but on the different axes so if i did this in this direction here i did it on this direction setting these two values to one 
So if this was set to 1 and then controlled by the scale option of size 1, then this was also set to 1. And then I can scale it with the size 2 size 2 value. Yeah, it looks kind of it sounds kind of complicated. I hoped I would be able to explain it better, but anyway, you can always pause the video and uh, watch these nodes and examine them as I go along. And from this group on, it gets sent to all the other nodes that create my shape. And let's start with the first one. This is practically the shape of my table. And it's not that complicated. I just uh, moved. I just created a copy with this setup. So I sent practically the same, um, the same uh, curve. And I moved the upper one half of the value of the top thickness and the lower one half of the wa value on the of the top thickness in um, down the z axis and then these two as you can see that this one this one let's go into this view as you can see this one is here the other one is up here so we have these two they're all joined so we have two of them like this and then i use the convex hull node to like connect them all not connect them but like convex hull is like a bounding box this is the result if you have more more angles it still works more vertices i mean okay and then this one is my basic shape of the table and i use the boolean with this shape and i'm going to show you in a second how i got to this shape but this is that inset shape so this is an inset shape that's controlled by uh, by 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 inset top uh, dimensions and this inset shape is subtracted from this bigger shape and it's also giving us an intersect of these two shapes to get that joint geometry look as you can see so we have this big shape and we have this smaller shape but thicker and then we we have here the the boolean where it gets like subtracted and the other one it gets intersected and then we just join these two and of course here we set the material for one we set the material for two for the other one okay but how did i get to this inset shape let's change this to pentagon that way it looks so as you can see this is not this is a really weird shape because it's not squared ratio uh, and it's a pentagon so this is not possible to make it with a scale a node or transform node and i needed to create like an inset node or offset node and that's something that blender still doesn't have as of uh, 3.1 alpha that's what where what I'm working with. So I created a group that creates an offset. And that's what I did. So from this shape, which is the my the original curve shape, I created an offset. And I don't want to go, and I will show you what how it looks like. And I don't want to go into detail how I created this node, but there is a video in which I explain just that. So if you want to recreate this uh, table, you will have to go and watch that video also to be able to recreate this offset uh, node group. And it obviously link in the description. 
Okay, so I offset this and I control the offset with the, with the inset top value, which is this one here, right? Okay, and I used also the switch here. And why did I use the switch? Uh, what is the switch? Uh, square ratio. Uh, what's the distance square ratio? I have no idea what does this do. Ah, uh, no, sorry. This is just a... Um, so, and here, this is a, a clamp to not be able to offset it too much. Too much. Because then it gets all weird shaped, you know. So I had to clamp it to not go on the negative inset. Okay, so this is the offset. And then I did the same thing here. So uh, I moved uh, down, up, joined, and then convex hole to get it right here. And that's the shape that I subtracted and intersected with the first shape to get that. All right, so here we have the shape of our top table and then what we got here here another offset but this offset is for the uh lower so the bottom part of the table so it's for this part this part right here that's the one again offset node sorry and uh, again a clamp so it doesn't get uh, doesn't go into negative geometry or weird stuff it gets clamped and again the same thing so move it up move it down control by the bottom thickness join convex hole and then position it Res respect uh, in respect of uh, the placement of the top and the thickness of the top and the height of the legs and all that stuff okay and then we also have the switch uh, re uh, regulated by the bottom thickness where if i set the bottom thickness to zero set to zero it disappears because this switch when it's zero it's false and when it's anything but zero it's true and then it sends out this geometry so this geometry goes in here it check out it checks out if the switch is zero or one and then if it's zero it sends out nothing false nothing comes in so nothing comes out and if it's true it sends out this so that's a way to uh, prevent that bevel problem that we talked about so if this was zero it would be flat as nothing and it would not be seen but it would prevent bevels from happening so that's why we need this switch output again set material and it goes back into joined so now it's okay so now we we don't see it because it's set to zero but bottom thickness like this okay so now let's go back to the last part and these are the legs so here we have a couple of things we have a switch again and switch it depends on whether my sides are greater than six or less than six so if I have like one, two, three, well, three, four, five, uh, six, something happens. And if I have seven, eight, then other thing happen. So if this is greater than six, then this geometry will be sent here. And if it's less than six, then this geometry will, will be sent here. And why is that? Because here, I'm offsetting. I'm I'm offsetting the this dimension. So until we have six vertices, we're gonna have. Let's go see the final product. We're gonna have as much legs, as much vertices we have. So if we have three vertices 
three vertices, we're gonna have three legs, and so on until we go over six. So if we have three, we have three legs, four, four legs, five, we have five legs, six, we have six legs, and after that, we're gonna have four legs. We're just gonna have four legs, and that's it. And so here, I'm offsetting uh, the control square that depends on the number of sides and uh, and it gets offset by the leg position value here and the other one is just a square that's also controlled by the offset distance by the leg position and it just sends out so seven vertices this goes uh, seven vertices this goes out five vertices oops sorry what did i do this goes out get it and then this is the this is the final shape that we're gonna instance our legs onto so this is my leg node we're gonna go through that in just a second but just this is a leg that's getting instanced we connected all the values of the leg node to the group input parameter so they get connected okay so here we have instance on points so we placed our legs onto our points that get controlled by this remember so one two three four five six and then four 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 okay and then we set the rotation the rotation we set it with the align euler to vector and this is again we have the switch here again and the switch is controlled by the leg alignment i've talked to you, to you about the leg alignment so if if the leg alignment is zero then we're going to use this and if leg alignment is one then we're going to use this very simple so this actually aligns uh aligns uh on the normals like this lines on the normals and this one aligns them all on the z-axis xy axis okay that's the and then we have the transform uh, realize instance oh, we needed to realize instances so that uh, the bevel would be you see that if we don't realize the instances the bevel doesn't work and then we need to set the material we have the switch here to set to set something smooth so we don't want to set smooth uh, the triangle and rectangle legs, but we want to set smooth, set shade smooth. Uh, we want to smooth our circle ones. See? Okay. And then we go into our join node where everything is connected together. And then the last thing, as you can see, the where is the origin point? We want the origin point to be at the base. So this is the transform node and this little cute operation to make that happen so that we set the table height, it goes in the right direction. And that is it. Hopefully you learned something. Ah, oh, sorry, ooh, I forgot, I forgot. We have our leg, our leg, our leg. Okay, let's just open it here. Okay, we have our leg here, and this is our leg. It's not that complicated. We start by the cylinder that gets controlled by the vertices, and we have only three options. So, one, two, three, one triangle, two rectangle, three, 16 angle that's why I chose 16 vertices for the circle one and that's it and these are all switches and things to get that to happen so when I have one then it sends out three when I have two it sends out four and when it ha when I have uh, three it sends out 16 vertices so that's why we have here cylinder with one two okay and then we have the shade smooth and then we have what's this uh, this is the rotation uh, 
because uh, if we have like a square if this rotation was not here m this is what my leg would look like and that's not what we want we want the square uh, shaped leg to be oriented right that's why uh, this is like a half pi i think or, or a pi divided by four that's 45 degrees in radians okay let's go back to four maybe vertices like this and then then we have the set position for our top radius top radius this is how you do it and the same thing for our bottom radius bottom radius top radius same thing controlled by this operations and then we have our transform to place it on the z-axis so that the origin point is the, in the upper uh, plane uh, so when it gets connected to the shape of the curve that's going to control the position of our legs it needs to be connected here right and then set position what is this offset uh, ah okay and this is uh this is what controls the this angle and also i forgot to mention the set position uh all ah, right the leg size ratio also is con it's controlled here with these operations here and this operations here that's how we control the size uh this this leg size ratio and all these things are controlled by the group input here and that's the one that if i go again to my table that's the one that i need that that, that are shown here and then i need to connect through the uh, parameters of the group input of the table so that I can control everything in here from this and that is it and now that is really it thank you so much for watching remember you can download this file from the link in the description and take care see you in the next one bye bye